How's it going everybody? Derek from Make Media Studios and this week I'm here with Chelsea Horn. She is a content creator, photographer, and a podcast host and I'm excited to have you on my show today. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, cra- it's a crazy day today. Um, this won't be seen for about a week or so, but it is election day here in America. So today is going to be a very stressful day. <laughs> yes, I'm already stressing over it. My husband and I were talking about it. And I'm like, I just don't want to talk about it. Hopefully everything goes well. You know, yeah. we've, we've done our part. There's nothing else we can do. So. Yeah, exactly. I just I hope to wake yeah. up tomorrow with a. Um, I don't know. A new reality. (laughs) I know. I know. Same here. We're in the same, same boat, same situation. So, but, um, um, yeah. So for people out there that don't know, um, what you do or who you are, why don't we give them a little bit of a, a background on you? Who are you and what you do? Sure. So my name is Chelsea Horn. I am a photographer first. I always call myself a photographer, but I also have a film degree, um, from Los Angeles film school, which kind of surprises people because they're like, you always say that you're a photographer, but, um, so photographer, filmmaker, I'm also a podcaster. I'm the co-host of Coffee with Creators with my friend and fellow, uh, content creator, Michael Soledad. Um, I'm more, let me start over. You're good. I'm big into Instagram. I have most of my following over there on Instagram, but I'm kind of inching my way over to uh, YouTube and creating videos and fun content over there. So nice. Yeah. Nice. Film school in LA. How was that? Yeah, I did everything online. Okay. It was all, it was all online. Yeah. So I, I actually only went there once and I didn't go to the school. My mom and I just went to Hollywood and we were just hanging out. Nice. I never, never made it over to the school though. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I did, I did film school myself up in San Jose. Okay. Um, I actually okay. just graduated um, in the fall, so that was I just oh, cool. recently did it. I am 33 though, so I just finished <laughs> my bachelor's degree. Um, I get it, I get it. I'm 30, and I finished not too long ago, so it was, don't feel bad. Yeah, I was, and I and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, how did how did you how did you meet Michael? Because I know I just had him on the podcast here recently. Yeah, we met through Instagram. Nice. Um, we were kind of chit chatting back and forth. You know, we're kind of both in the same realm of content creation as far as photographing our desks and um, kind of on the tech side and stuff like that. Um, The way we started the podcast, though, is I bought a lot of expensive podcasting equipment and I was like, hey, Michael, start a podcast with me. (laughs) And he's like, okay, that sounds fun. (laughs) And so we, in one day, we kind of you know, made a plan of what we were going to talk about, what was going to be our overall goal. We came up with the name. And then I think that next week we started recording. Nice. And it's just all, all history now. Yeah. How long have you been doing it now? Uh, we started in April okay. and Michael and I had only talked, um, just, you know, through DM, just back and forth a couple of times. And then when we decided to start the podcast, we kind of, you know, we had zoom or not zoom calls. I don't think Zoom was even like a big thing until later in April. Um, <laughs> yeah. FaceTime? You know, FaceTime? Got, FaceTime. We did. We did FaceTime and Instagram okay. video messaging. Yeah. And we just kind of became um, acquainted and we started becoming really good friends and we really hit it off from like day one. We felt like we had known each other forever. And so that's why we seem to have really good chemistry. People ask us all the time, like, oh, did you guys know each other before? Right. And we're like, no, I've, we've never even met in person. It's just all through Instagram and DMing and everything. That's going to so. be a really great episode of the podcast the day you guys do a podcast in person somewhere. I know. We're waiting. I mean, we probably would have already if it wasn't right. for COVID and everything. I mean, I travel all the time. I love to travel. Um, so I definitely would have made it out to San Diego by now. But, you know, things when, happen. Yeah, I know. I'm, I want to travel myself right now. Uh, I got I got married last year. And my wife is congratulations. Thank you. My wife is from Spain, and okay. we haven't been able to. I haven't actually been able to go to Spain yet. So oh, no. that's 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 the big thing. So once yeah. once all these travel restrictions end, and hopefully you know the the virus goes down, um, we can we can get some travel in there. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, <laughs> us too for sure. We're we're in Georgia right now, and we moved from Hawaii to hear. And it it was definitely a big culture shock for us. Even though my husband and I are both from Tennessee originally, 
uh, we hadn't lived in the South in a really long time. And we came back here and we were like, oh yeah, the South, we forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so we were expecting to be able, like we were looking forward to being able to travel since we were in the States and, you know, car rides and yeah. road trips and stuff. And then all of this happened and we were like, Oh no, now we're just stuck in Georgia. Yay. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. I'm actually going to be, I'm going to be in Georgia in about three weeks. Uh, my, awesome. my dad lives in Atlanta. So. Okay. That's like two hours from me. Nice. I'm, he's actually in Kennesaw. I'm not sure. Oh, I know. I know exactly where that is. When I travel up to Tennessee to visit family, I go right through Kennesaw. Yep. Yep. Cause I've gone up yep. there to Chattanooga. That's, that's where, oh. that's where we go check out the aquarium. <laughs> yeah. I've been <laughs> there. Yeah. I've been there. I was a kid. The last time I was there, I was a a really long time ago. Yeah, we went with yeah. my little brothers and stuff because I got I got oh, two okay. brothers there in Atlanta, and um, so we're going out there for Thanksgiving. So ah, oh, fun, enjoy. Yeah, yeah, down there in the south. Uh, oh, those yeah. summers, man, with the, the humidity, Oof. it's too much. And then with the the amount of bugs that they have here, it's just too much for my little city slicker children. <laughs> they, so yeah, they they can't hardly handle it. They're like, oh no, God, we're going inside. So <laughs> how so? Um, yeah. this is for me in the future. This part of the podcast is for me to watch back later when I have my own family. So how is it mm-hmm. being a content creator and a mom? It's it's a wild ride for sure. It's a lot of adjusting. A lot of trying to learn how to manage your time properly, which I really suck at. Um, <laughs> it's it's a lot of give and take. Like today, the schools, my son is in uh, first grade, and of course the schools were closed, and I had mom brain, and I waited too long to get him into our daughter's daycare. Okay. So he's currently at home. Luckily, though, my brother-in-law lives close, and, close, and he was able to come over and chill downstairs with him. So nice. it's a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of give and take. It's a lot of you work when you can, you kind of, you be with the family when you can. It's a lot of late hours as well. I so bet, I bet is a lot of editing. Is it a lot of editing and doing things after hours? Is that, is that what it is? Yes. Yes. I do most of my content creation during the day Right. when it's quiet, if I'm recording or when I can really focus. And then after bedtime is when I do a lot of my post-production work. Are you bringing the laptop um, into the bed or are you just editing in your office or... <laughs> <laughs> no. So I, I have certain times that I'm in the office because if not, I find things getting really stagnant for myself. If I'm constantly working in the same area of the house, I'll, I get burnt out. Okay. I found. So, you know, um, probably around 930, I come into the office and then I leave the office at 330 to go get the kids from school. And then after 330, I don't look at the office again until the next morning. Got it. So I do... Most, this sounds crazy, but I do no. most of my post-production and my editing, I do it all sitting on the couch. <laughs> uh, no, it makes sense. I, I do the same thing. I, I yeah. would say that I here in my set, I film and do my, I do a lot of work in here during the day, but I also try mm-hmm. to, um, in the evening, if me and my wife are watching television or we're both like on our phones, I'll, I'll bring yeah. my laptop out there and I'll just edit my podcast or I'll edit whatever I need yeah. to uh, there. So we're still together and spending time yeah. together, but- That's, yeah, that's the same here because, you know, I have two little kids and I try to limit their time in the office because there's a lot of expensive equipment and they're very handsy. They like to touch everything. So yeah, I pull the laptop out into the living room and, you know, interact with them. So, because really from, you know, four o'clock until seven is like the only time that I have with them. So right. A lot of a lot of late hours after bedtime is when we do a lot of post production. So this is this is for me to watch later on um, to 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 in the future. I'll, I'll look back on this and and take yes. those notes. Um, That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we have cats right now. That's our okay. We have two. We got two boys. Uh, we, okay. just, we just got a <laughs> That's new. Cute. We just got a new cat, a kitten. Um, he's uh-huh. four months right now. So. Uh, we have the downstairs okay. neighbors because we're in an apartment here. Uh, they've mm-hmm. been complaining about too much noise because our cats jump. Oh. They're chasing each other. So okay, and the big, That's cute. The, the boy, the older one, he's eleven pounds. So I, I tried to explain <laughs> to my wife. I'm like, think about it. Like we have, like a bowling ball is like twelve pounds. Uh-huh. A twelve pound bowling ball. Um, uh-huh. Our cat is eleven and a half pounds. It's like dropping the bowling ball in the living room every <laughs> every so two minutes. <laughs> so. 
<laughs> That's so funny, though. I love that. <laughs> but um, I'm sure your neighbors do not love it, though. No, they do not. And uh, like I said, we just moved down here. Um, from okay. I just moved here from the Bay Area, actually. Okay. So I was up there, and we just came down here in August. So. Okay. There, so you're in LA. Yeah. LA now. Yeah, okay. we're in Long Beach. So we're just. Okay. It's kind of nice. We were able to go to the beach yeah. and stuff like that. That was a new thing for us when we moved here in August. Uh, I bet. It was really peaceful to get away and just go to the beach every day after, after work, yeah. right? When everything kind of settled down, or, or we go at four or five o'clock and hang out at the beach. Yes. That's the best time. That's the time we always took our kids because no one was there. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't as hot. So the kids weren't complaining that they were hot or, right. you know, whatever. Because my kids complain about everything. But yeah, it's a good time to go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what do you, when it comes to your niche of photography, when you were saying, at least for your content creation, um, how did you come about the niche of the de- the, the, the the fancy desk niche? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's there. I so. It is there, and honestly, I really just kind of fell into it. I was trying to get into content creation on social media. I had, you know, my first love of photography when I first started was landscape, and, you know, that worked for me in Hawaii because there's beautiful landscape everywhere you look, but then when I moved here, um, I didn't take the time probably to find any good landscape, but we had four bedrooms. And so I was like, I'm going to make this, this extra room, my office. Got it. And so I kind of just started photographing, like I called it office updates. It was like every day I posted something new that was going into the office. And then as I built my desk and everything, I just started photographing mm-hmm. it. And it, seemed to really relate to people. People really started to like it. So I just kind of kept going with it. I started adding new things. And, you know, before I knew it, companies were reaching out and they were sending me things. Um, so yeah, that's, I kind of just fell into it, honestly. That's really cool. That's really cool. How <laughs> yeah. long did it take to evolve the office? Does it take? It, I mean, it's always evolving. Right. I mean, still, even today, I'm changing things and cha- things always look different, but probably, it took really probably six or seven months from like the very start until I started seeing like people interacting and liking my content mm-hmm. and things like that. Nice, nice. Um, I, I'm going to yeah. dive into your, uh, if you don't mind, the uh, brands hitting you up for the office stuff because that's something that I'm I haven't um, seen yet, and um, mm-hmm. and I bet a lot of people out there probably wonder how does that kind of work. I mean, do they just say, hey, we want to send you a table? Or, you know, or, hey, we want to send you this. Well, how does it work? Yeah, so, I mean, basically that is how it works. Um, when I first got started, I had smaller companies. Like, I'm sure you've probably heard of them. Lamacall, they're like a big Amazon okay. company. Um, they were the first ones to send me anything, and I remember being so excited. And basically that's all they did. They slid into my DMs and was like, hey, Chelsea, we love your office photos. Can we send you this iPad stand? Okay. I obviously said yes. And okay. It it just went from there. I posted a couple photos for them. I think I probably sent them a couple extra photos for them to use. Okay. Um, but as I started to grow, as I started to get more followers and more interaction, um, I started to get bigger companies. Like I've worked with Rode, I've worked with LoomCube, I've worked with GroveMade, and with those companies, um, some companies I charge. Um, but if it's the bigger companies, I, you know, make sure that they give me an affiliate link and then they obviously right. send over a product for uh, photos in exchange. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of one of the latest companies that I worked with. I'm not sure if you've heard of them. They're a startup. Um, it's called Vitraza. Okay. I have not they heard have of glass- them. They have glass chair mats and they essentially, they reached out and was like, Hey, we're looking for someone to promote our newest chair mat. Uh, we would love to, you know, work with you. Maybe you could do a YouTube video. And essentially I just wrote them back and was like, sure. I would love to work with you guys. Here is my fee. And for my fee, I provide this, you know, yada, yada, yada. They agreed to it. They sent over the chair mat and it, it just went from there. And that's essentially how, all of my interactions with brands go, unless it's a company that I really want to work with, yeah. like Aperture. When I worked with them, I did that for free. Of other than an affiliate link, an, affi- an affiliate link. Yeah. Okay. So interesting, interesting. Yeah. And how did you? Yeah. 
um, gauge that whole building the contract or not the contract, but like, you know, this is my fee. I'm not going to ask you what your fee is, but what, um, <laughs> like, how did you come across figuring that out? Yeah. So it was a lot of trial and error. Okay. Cause I know, I don't, <laughs> I mean, cause I don't think there's a place out there where you can just search, you know, how much does it cost? You know, it, it, yeah, it's very, no. it's a very secretive kind of, not secretive, but it's a very, and, and that's good. And that's, what's actually, I yeah. think kind of thrilling about it or, um, yeah. it makes you interested in it a little bit more. Yeah. So when I first, so actually how I got started in charging is a company reached out and was like, Hey, we would like to know your fee. And I was like, Oh, okay. I didn't okay. know like you paid people for this okay. stuff. And so I had already talked to Michael a couple times and I reached out to him and was like, Hey, somebody wants to pay me for content creation. What do I do? Okay. okay. <laughs> he kind of just gave me the low down. He's like, you know, you can tell him this is your fee. And in turn for that fee, you will provide four photos for your Instagram. You'll provide other photos for them to use for their social media okay. and stuff like that. And so it really just depends on the amount of content creation I'm doing. If I'm creating a YouTube video, if I'm doing an unboxing, if I'm doing just photos, like a post and a story with a swipe up link, like it really varies on the price that I, that I tell them. Wow. That's so cool. Um, that's, that's, that's <laughs> one of my, um, Definitely. So I want to build my my uh, my desk corner next. So what I have yeah. going on here, which you don't can't see it completely, uh, is kind of uh, furniture and things that have brought from my last apartment and my last set mm -hmm. that I had. But now this is my first time being in. I have a I have a spare bedroom, and this uh, this mm -hmm. is now my office, and uh, I want that. I want to make one of those clean. You know, I like the like the white shelf and the you know yeah. like the clean look the clean look that that, that yeah. everyone wants. Um, I that's my next goal. Awesome! So, I'm sure you will you will you will meet your goal. I'm I sure. Think I'm gonna, what I'm, <laughs> my plan would be right is to do kind of a you know there's gonna do the podcast for a little bit and my and my set and then there's gonna be like a moment where I go I'm changing everything, right? And then yeah. there's gonna be like a big reveal when I when I get all that's, the new things and. Yes, I did that too. When I first started um, posting my office photos, my walls were gray. Okay. And we had bought this house and of course it was it was a new house. So they had painted, the builder had just painted all the walls the same color. Right. So if you notice, like if you go way back into my Instagram, um, you can see the brown walls and then they transition to the gray walls. Okay. And then I eventually got fed up with that and I painted everything black. Okay. This shelf behind me used to be brown. I painted it black. Okay. Uh, so it was it was kind of that like everything looked a certain way, and then I was like, big reveal. Look what I did this weekend. Yeah. Type of thing. Yeah. So. And you have. It was fun, and I'm I'm sure I'll probably do it again. <laughs> yeah, I mean it seems exciting. Like that's my next. I already my wife. Um, I already told her. I was like, yeah. So she's like, as long as you give me a budget for, um, I'm gonna have her help me design it. Cause like, so she's like, I'm going to give her like a hundred bucks and she's going to do all the yeah. little trinkets and the, oh, and all awesome. the different things. So she gets to decide that, um, aesthetic about it. So do you have that's two cool. desks? I do have two desks. You have a podcast um, nook. I, <laughs> I do. I have a pod corner, I call it. And that's, I'm actually creating a video right now that is dedicated to the pod corner. Nice. Um, it's kind of like how I pull inspiration when I'm creating the podcast and when I go to set up and when we're kind of like talking ideas over for the podcast or when Michael and I have our meetings, like everything is done right here. Um, and this desk is the white top desk. I'm sure you guys have seen it. And then the other, like my main desk, which is really just used for junk right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's a reclaimed wood top okay. desk. They, they both have wheels. I move them around. They're constantly all over the place. So. Yeah. Yeah. How, how is it keeping the the fancy desk clean. How is that life? Oh, it is a constant battle. Like if you could see both of my desks right now, like stuff is just everywhere. Right. It obviously only looks really good in the photos. Right. And that's because I'm swiping everything off right before I take the photo. Mm -hmm. And then after the photo, like all of the junk comes back on. Are you using a lot of, <laughs> it are you using like a lot of practic practical lighting when you're taking your photos of your desk or are you using um, lights, actual lights that you're using? I do. Yeah. I use the Aperture 120D. It's my main key light. And that's what then I got right I'll here. either. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. 120D. Awesome. Yep. It's a great light. It's fantastic. I always 
recommended to everyone. They're like, what type of lighting should I use? I'm like, just go ahead and pay the $800, get the 120D, you won't regret it. You won't, you won't. <laughs> but as a, as a fill light, I use, um, I have a huge window okay. and I use that to bring in a little bit of extra like natural lighting. Yeah. And I think that complements the 120D pretty good. I also have some little like Aperture MC lights. Yep. I love those. Yep. And then I have a Luminate light, which I'm testing for the company right now. And I absolutely love it. It's super cool. You can, it has like these magnetic things that you can like snap Ooh. wherever you want. It's really fun. Yeah. I'm really enjoying it. That's cool. Um, yeah. Where, um, aperture. I love aperture. That's actually like, I'm using the MC lights myself. Um, I really enjoy those. I love my 120 D that was one of my favorite yes. light purchases. I definitely suggest everyone that, you know, wants one to definitely get it. Um, for sure. I forgot what I was going to add. There was a, there was something that was going down. Did you, don't you hate that when that happens? I know it happens to me all the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> what other, what other, um, besides content creation, is there anything else are you doing freelance work or anything like that outside? I of- do do. I do. Yeah. My main source of income is from product photography and it's still working with, you know, a lot of the same companies that I promote for. Mm-hmm. It's just me doing back end work. Uh, sending them photos that they use for their websites and stuff like that. Nice, nice. We're going to take a quick yeah, I, quick time out. I'm so sorry. One of my lights just turned off right as we're talking about lighting. And that's okay. That's so <laughs> funny. Seconds. Okay. All right, so now that I'm back and I've fixed my light back there, but I want to do a little show and tell. I think we have the exact same. We do. It's exactly the same. You got the, got the, got the guy in the corner and all that. So I do. I so stole this from my film teacher. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to ask if you got it from B&H. I, that's where I got mine from. I'm pretty sure he got it from B&H, but I stole probably. it from my old film teacher. And um, he's awesome. probably watching this and he's going to call me he's out like, on it. That's where that went. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's like borrowed it like a year and a half ago and I that's still have so it. That's so funny. I actually, I don't use my slate now, but I obviously did in film school and I still have one of the short films that I shot. Written um, in on it. Yeah. It's still on there and I can't get it off. So I'm like, oh, well, it'll just stay on there, I guess. <laughs> well, I yeah, I love I love the the information you're giving me about um, you know, being a content creator. I think I think it's a very um Michael talked about this with, you know, explaining when his wife explains to people what he does for a living, you know. Yeah. She, it's it's hard to explain. How, do you find it hard to explain to people what what you're doing? I do. My family asks all the time and I just tell them, you know, I I'm a photographer. I essentially am a billboard for other companies on my social media. And then sometimes they still don't understand that. And I'm like, I'm just a photographer. Like, it's fine. Just photography. That's what I do. And they're Mm -hmm. like, Oh, okay. So do you like photograph people? I'm like, no. (laughs) So yeah, no, no one ever understands product photography. Yeah. That's what I say. But my family, like they're from the South. Okay. And a lot of them are like, I didn't know companies did that. I'm like, yeah, they do. <laughs> it's a very interesting, I, I mean, it hasn't been it around is. too long. It uh, hasn't. No, it's fairly new. And then a lot of, of course, like my grandparents and my, I think my mom comprehends what I do. I mean, she listens to the podcast and she knows that. And she thinks it's really cool, like that other people follow me for my advice. desk and yeah. everything. Yeah, but yeah. she, um, my dad definitely doesn't understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do you he just, I think he just assumes that I stay at home and just play around in my office all day. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what my, my, that's what my parents think too. Yeah. Um, what do you, when you said being a billboard for other companies, how do you feel about that? Cause I feel like there's some people out there that don't like it. I've seen yeah. some, I've seen some hate comments out there, I've gotten them yeah. on my stuff before. And it's definitely like, I hate calling myself an influencer. I know Michael and I have talked about that a lot on our podcast. It's like one of those cringy things. But I mean, when you really think about it, that's, it's, it's what we are. We're billboards for other, um, for other companies. And Michael and I are, I know Michael and I, and then a lot of other content creators are trying to break away from that. And that's why Michael and I show a lot of our voice. Mm -hmm. Um, That's why we, you know, we are very choosy about the companies that we work with. Absolutely. Um, I know for, I can't speak for Michael, but for myself in general, I 
only work with a company if it was something that I'm genuinely interested in. If it's something right. that I would buy for my desk, if it's something that I'm going to use in my day to day life as a content creator, then I will say yes. Um, right. I know a lot of other content creators in the beginning, especially, and I know I did it too. And I know Michael did. We say yes to everything. And then you get to a point where you're like, you kind of feel used almost. And then, so you kind of start dialing things back and you're like, you know, if I'm going to further this as a career, I have to really start focusing on my brand. And I know Mm -hmm. that's what I'm, I'm doing right now. And it's, it's a lot of, um, a trial and error. You find things that work for you and for your brand and your audience. And you kind of just go from there. It's really cool. It's really interesting. Uh, it's really, it's really nice to hear it from someone that's doing it because, you know, I think as people like me that are, are that, would love to be there and hopefully one day, um, every day, just getting a little bit closer. Oh but, yeah, um, it takes time. It took me like two years. So don't yeah. give up. Just keep trying. Michael and I say all the time, just start. And you've, you've started. So you're, you're yeah. already on your way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, yeah, I enjoy doing the, I want to do more of the tech review kind of unboxing style videos. Definitely. I, 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 I dabble in it myself every once in a while when I get a new product and I try to, you know, do kind of my own review about it Mm -hmm. um and i i i enjoy it i enjoy making that type of content because it's the type Mm -hmm. of content i i consume and that's what i explain to people it's like what do i watch i I go on youtube and i watch people unbox things and i watch people do tech reviews on equipment that are related to cinematography and photography so absolutely that's how i got started as well is because that is the type of content that i was consuming and i'm like i think i can do this And I was, you know, obviously following Michael and I was like, when I had the opportunity to have my own space, I'm like, I can do that. And so that's what I did. And I just kind of, everything else just kind of snowballed and it is what it is today. But I wouldn't say it was intentional on my end because when I did start, I had no idea what I was doing. I knew I wanted to be on Instagram and I wanted to have a pretty profile. And that's what I did. Everything else just kind of came yeah. As it, as it did. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think, I, I mean, I, I, I bet five years ago you weren't in your head probably thinking, oh, I'm going to, this is what I'm going to be doing in five years. Um, no way. No way. I started as my stepsister calls it a GD mommy blogger. And that's what I was not five years ago, but like four years ago. Um, I was a GD mommy blogger <laughs> and <laughs> then I found a love of photography and filmmaking. Okay. I went to film school. Uh, We were living in Hawaii. Things were really pretty. I always had inspiration to create, and it's just, that's how it took off. (laughs) I was also watching a lot of Peter McKinnon. (laughs) (laughs) I think a lot of us have been. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, for sure. (laughs) I I enjoy enjoy it. Um, I've been watching Peter McKinnon since his first office there in his house, and that was- Me too. And it was just so awesome to see him evolve from there to the new office that he has that now Maddie has. Mm -hmm. Um, And then on to his warehouse that he has now. It's insane. It's it's insane. He, yeah, he's doing really well. I hope the best to continue for him because he is, he's definitely one that has worked hard and deserves everything that he has. So absolutely. He's a great, he's a great storyteller. That's the main thing. That's, that's, that is, that's the most important. That's what I tell people all the time that ask like, how do I get started or, you know, stuff. I'm like, don't worry about the expensive gear. Just focus on pushing your story first. Story always counts. Mm -hmm. You can have the crappiest audio, the crappiest video. As long as you have a story to tell that your audience wants to listen to, they're going to stick around. They're going to wait for you to have better quality because they're loving your stories. Yeah. And it's almost the opposite of what people probably think. It's it's like, oh, I need a better, I need a camera, I need a microphone, and then I'll I'll figure it out. But it's really like, no, tell a story that is the opposite. It's actually like, get really good audio. Because yeah. <laughs> if it sounds really good and it's just like a cell phone, it's going to be great. Yeah. Um, and then get a camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. I know. I started, because um, I was a mommy blogger, I started actually taking photos. I was doing my own stock photos for my blogs. Ooh. And yeah, it was, it was terrible. Anyways, <laughs> I was using my cell phone and... I was okay with it, but I convinced my husband into getting a Nikon D610, okay. which I was super excited about. And I learned how to use that really well. And then I wanted to transition into video, so I switched over to Canon. 
Yeah. Um, and then, of course, in film school, they gave us the Sony FS5, mm -hmm. which I recently just sold to get the R5. So nice. it takes time, you guys. Just start with what you have. That's what I did. I mean, we didn't have a lot of money at the time. I used my phone. And then when I eventually was able to upgrade, that's what I did. But All right. Well, that's I think that's a good route to go down. Can you you just gave a little bit of advice, but um, let's let's package it for them. Give give some advice to viewers out there that want to um, get into that content creation world. Um, what would you give them? Yeah, well, if you guys listen to Coffee with Creators, Michael and I are like a broken record over there. I'm constantly saying just start. Um, I mentioned this earlier. Don't focus on the equipment that you have. Uh, your audience obviously isn't going to be there in the beginning. I know it took two years for my audience to find me and for me to find my audience. Um, but most importantly, I would say start creating for yourself. Don't worry about your audience. Don't worry about what they want to see just yet. Start creating for yourself. I know personally that's what I did. I started with landscape photography because I generally just thought it was pretty. No. I, you know, I liked the things that I was capturing and I started posting them. And it didn't really work for me as far as audience goes. And that didn't matter to me. I just loved the adventure I was having, the story that I was telling through my lens. Um, yeah, that, I think that's the best piece of advice I could give anyone. I think that's some great advice. Just do it. Thank you. Yes, just start, just do it. It's <laughs> like little, Michael little, and I's, it's our tagline over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well... Chelsea, thank you very much for being on the podcast today. Of course. Thank Thanks you for, for being having me. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hopefully uh, I can make it over to California. We can hang out sometime. Yeah, well, I'll have to come out here when you come out and see Michael. So, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you very much for watching this podcast today. This has been Chelsea from the Creators with Coffee. Uh, Coffee with Creators podcast. I messed it up. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's a great podcast. You should really check it out. You should check out her content and what she's doing. It's really amazing. Um, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> this has been another Make Media Studios podcast. We are out.